friends, it's Lala. Today we're gonna put to the test, can we really trust our favorite booktubers? <laughs> If you're new to my channel, sometimes I choose weekly, monthly TBRs based on other people. My husband's chosen my TBR, my son's chosen my TBR, I've taken a DNA test and chosen my TBR based on that. One time I followed another booktuber's TBR for the month and I thought it would be fun to do a booktuber, booktubers decide my TBR, but I didn't know how to make it work. I could ask for recommendations or I could watch a recommendations video. Every scenario I came up with, there was some bias involved, whether I was picking it or they were picking it for me. And then suddenly, like this week, three booktubers put out this video called, if you like this, you should read this. This is not a new video concept. People have been doing it for years. I might end up watching some older ones, some newer ones. Clear cut stats. If I liked this, I should like this. I'm gonna watch everyone's videos and by the end of it I'd like to have 10 books and I'll give them all a try. The thing is they're saying like if you like this you should read this but also if I've already read this I should take this as a recommendation. So if any book shows up that I rated four or five stars then I am adding the comparable book that they're mentioning to my TBR. Does that make sense? We're gonna start with Haley. Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing one of my favorite videos to do, and that is if you liked this book, then you might like this book. I'm not gonna show you every book they mentioned because that would drag this video on, so I'm just gonna cut everything up so you can see when something shows up that I'm actually gonna read, okay? So to start it off, if you liked Heartless by Marissa Meyer, then you would probably like Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. Okay, sorry, I just said I was cutting all of that out, but I still want you to see my, my reactions of like, no, I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> Has anyone ever done a video that's like, if you hate this book, don't read this one? I should make that. Next, if you enjoyed The Astonishing Color of After by- I did, I gave it. Five stars, it was one of my favorite books of the year last year. Okay, oh my god, what is she gonna recommend? I'm nervous. Emily XR Pan, which if you haven't read this, you definitely should. If you have and you liked it, then you might enjoy The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. Nope. I have that book. I actually have a history of liking Cynthia Hand. The Afterlife of Holly Chase was one of my favorite books of the year before last year. Oh my gosh, I have my first book on my TBR and I didn't even have to buy it. Next up, if you enjoyed Eliza and Her Monsters by Her Whoa, okay. Eliza and Her Monsters is one of my favorite books of all time. <laughs> oh, what are you gonna recommend me? It might be something I've already read. Okay, now I wanna make this a game and try to guess what she's gonna recommend. Another book involving um, like fan fiction-y stuff would be Fangirl. Oh no. You know, she's probably gonna recommend because everyone is so obsessed with it is um, Radio Silence which is another one of my favorite books. Zapia, I think you would really, really love Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. Radio Silence! That proves that I should trust Haley and her opinions. We're already proving the booktubers can be trusted. Hey, if I get one book added to my TBR from each of these videos, like, I'm winning. All right, next I am watching Gabby Reads. Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming another if you like this book Then you will also like this book. The next one I have for you is if you liked little fires everywhere by Celeste Ng. I did I gave it five stars. I don't know why I want to find all these books to show you I just want to give you evidence. Like, Look how much I loved it. I own it. What does she think I'm gonna like? I think you would also like This Is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel and vice versa, mainly because I feel like these books talk a lot about parenthood. Okay, see, I don't like this book because it talked about parenthood. I have never heard of that book, but I'm gonna add it to my TBR without even learning anything about it because I trust you, Gabby. My next one is If You Liked Sometimes I Lie by Alice mm. Feeney. I think you would also like The Lies We Told by Camila Way. I gave both of those books three stars. Whoa, what a valid recommendation. Both mediocre for me, but could be great for someone else. Next one I have for you is If You Loved The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I can't even take this. 
Uh, yes, I loved The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Who knew that people would be recommending things that not only have I read, but that I have freaking loved. One of my favorite thriller horror books of last year. What are you recommending to me? Because I'll read it. Paul Tremblay, I think you would also like No Exit by Taylor Adams. Bitch. When I had this video idea, I had no idea it would be this successful. This has been on my TBR for a couple months. I didn't know when I was gonna get around to it, so the time is now. So my next one is gonna be If You Like the Book Sadie by Courtney Summers. I, I can't. Yes, I liked the book Sadie by Courtney Summers. I gave it five stars, so did everybody else. Here it is. Okay, so she's gonna recommend a revenge thriller? I can't really think of any that I have besides like the Nowhere Girls. I think you would also like The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Okay. I am done. I really thought I was gonna have not heard of any of these books. I was gonna have to go to the library, check a book out late. No, this is the third book that I already freaking own. Now that I'm thinking about it, these two books do get recommended in tandem frequently. But here's the thing, even if these books are similar, which I could easily find out via like any bookish website when it says like, here's other books like this, having the same plot or themes doesn't necessarily mean that you'll still enjoy both books. So yes, I knew these were similar, but it's good to know that people who liked this also enjoyed this. The next one I have for you is if you liked The Secret History by Donna Tart. If I like The Secret History by Donna Tart, are you going to recommend me If We Are Villains by M.L. Rio? Because, of course you are. I think you would also like If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. Both of my favorite books of all time. Gabby coming through with accurate recommendations. If we're with my TBR, next we're going to do... Uh, Jenny. Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel. This story ain't over. So today I wanted to do a really fun video on one that I think is really exciting, and that is if you like this, then you might like this. The first pairing that I have for you is if you liked Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I didn't, but you're probably gonna recommend me Eliza and Her Monsters or Radio Silence, which I did. Oh. This book really reminded me of Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. So okay, these next two books I feel like are super underrated and I really, really love them. So the first one is The Star Search Queen by Roshni Chakshi. I absolutely love this book. Basically this book is like an Indian inspired fantasy. That book has not really appealed to me, but if the second book she mentions is one that I liked, which it could be like, she could recommend um, that Renee Autier book or Girls of Paper and Fire. And so I thought that this was pretty similar to Winter Song by S.J. Jones. All right, two books that I'm not interested in. Haven't read. All right, and this last pair is two books that I read recently and I absolutely love both dealing with characters who last are dealing chance. with double identities. So these are pretty interchangeable because I feel like they're both super underrated. And they are American Panda by Gloria oh. Chow and The Love and Lies oh. of Ruxana Ali by Sabina Khan. All right, I rated both of those books four stars. So good recommendations. This video is full of good recommendations, but I've already, I've already read them. All right, who else we got? Jess Reads Books. She posted one 11 months ago. I have only recently subscribed to her channel, so I definitely haven't seen this. Um, but also, like, I don't know her reading tastes yet, and I don't know if our reading tastes match up yet. So let's see. Hey, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be new here, my name is Jess. You know, possibly if you like this book, then you'll like this book, that kind of thing. And the first one I have here is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about this book. I love Ready Player One. So... Who lives in a society. I feel like she's gonna recommend like Warcross. And so I started reading this book and I noticed there's a lot of similarities. Now I obviously love Ready Player One a lot more, but that would be Warcross by Marie Lu. This I is very, very it. similar. Okay, this is one I'm super iffy about because I am not interested in Warcross whatsoever. And I didn't necessarily like Ready Player One because of the video game. Uh, virtual reality aspect of it, so let me still add it to my TBR. Oh my god, there's so many channels on here that like, I I have no idea who you are. Oh, Casey something. I think I've subscribed to her. Eight months ago, put out one. Oh, 
I'm not subscribed, my bad girl. I think we have some similar reading tastes, so. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the, if you liked that, then you will like this book thing. I don't know if this is a tag. The first one I want to suggest is if you liked Aristotle and Dante Discover the Universe. I, I did. I think I've actually dropped my reading from a four to a three though, so. Then you will love Tin Man. Tin Man is kind of like Aristotle and Dante Discover the Universe because they follow similar stories. Whoa, I never thought I would see Tin Man in a video. I've never even heard anybody who's heard of Tin Man. Weird. Here it is. Straight from my TBR shelf. Okay, let's keep going. Right, we've also got a girl named Ali Corvier. Hi friends, it's Hi. Ali, and welcome to another round of If You Liked This, Then You'll Like This. So, do you like emotionally oh. taxing mm -hmm. historical fiction? No. Well, if you liked The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, you will also like Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. All right, ah, uh, I know a book to stay away from now. Do you like strong female protagonists who go to assassin school I and don't. become badass assassins on the page? Did you love The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman? I didn't. If you liked The Female of the Species, haven't read it yet, girl. Or even if you didn't like it, like me, I would recommend reading The Way I Used to Be. Open. I didn't like that book. Now I'm scared. I got recommended The Female of the Species, and now I got disrecommended The Female of the Species. All right, that's it. That's another video where I didn't leave with a recommendation. Sandy reads a lot. Hey girl, who are you? Hi everyone, it's Sandy and in today's video Sandy. I will be recommending books based on other books. I'm going to go ahead right. and get started with the recommendations. If you liked The Female of the Species by Minnie McGinnis. What a weird day. <laughs> what? What are you going to recommend me? Sadie? Then read The Nowhere Girls by Amy oh, Reed. Oh shit. I did not like The Nowhere Girls. That is now two votes against this book and one for it. This is gonna be an interesting reading vlog. If you liked The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I did, I sure did, five stars. Everybody loves that book. Then read Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I did, I read it. I gave it four stars, three and a half stars. Solid recommendation. So if you liked To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I did. You're probably gonna recommend me a Maureen Goo. Then you'll like I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. I didn't actually have I Believe in a Thing Called Love on my TBR, but I do have another Maureen Gu on my TBR. Oh my gosh, Hannah did this video two weeks ago. Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a video that I've been asked to make for several years now, and that is the If You Like This, Then Try This book recommendations. Hannah and I have some similar book tastes, but some very different book tastes. So. This video is being made in paid promotion with Disney Book Group to celebrate hey girl, the release of The point. Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. Oh my god, is she gonna recommend The Devouring Grey based on something? Because, um, I want to read that so bad. Shut up. Are you recommending it based on something? This book is said to be for fans of The Raven Boys and Stranger Things, and it follows three main persons. Is that your recommendation? Is that your first recommendation? If I love The Raven Boys, I'm gonna love Devon Ringy because that's my favorite series of all time. Okay, hold on. Stop. This book has been so freaking hyped everywhere for the last couple months, so I would be so stoked if this is an official recommendation. Is it? Is Have you read it? Girl. So I'm excited to read this, and I'm hoping it's similar to that. Okay, I, mean, I don't know if I can take that as an official recommendation because she hasn't read it, but, but, but I want to read it. I got offered an arc of it and I turned it down. So I'm crying a little bit over it every time I see it in my feed. I'm reading it, okay? But let's get into my recommendations. So first up, I have a recommendation based off of one of my favorite books of all time, but that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I did like The Night Circus and I know exactly what she's gonna recommend. So if you like The Night Circus, then I think you will also like The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. The Weight? I did not see that recommendation coming at all. 
Next up on my list, I have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. And if, what are you gonna recommend? Eliza and Her Monsters or Radio Silence? And if you like this Let's book, see. then I definitely think you will like Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. You're right, I loved it. <laughs> All right, I need to find one more video and one more recommendation. All right, last one I found is by a channel called Free In Fiction. I don't know your name. Introduce yourself, if you don't mind. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a recommendations video, which I've never done this type of video before, but it was really fun to like pick out the books. If you liked We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, I didn't. You're going to like Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pessel. Marisha Pessel, I did love that book, so I don't trust you. <laughs> what else you got? Here I have, if you liked, Geekerella by Ashley Poston. You are going to like Eliza and Her Monsters, which is by Francesca Zappia, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not completely sure. Okay. Wow, I really have no interest in Geekerella. Hmm. Is it hard hitting YA? I thought that was pretty light. Eliza and Her Monsters is dark. So I never thought I would be reading Geekerella. I'm a little shocked. I'm trusting you. I, I trust booktubers i have to let me know in the comments below what you think about what's about to happen so here's what we're starting with of the 10 books recommended to me i already have five of them on my tbr shelf so we have these to work with and i figured i'll buy the devouring gray just from my bookstore because i was probably gonna buy it anyway i need to track down those four books that i don't have we have a couple of different options i might end up doing the audiobook for something but for the purposes of making a video i want to have all 10 books in my hand because i have a problem so we're gonna focus on getting them free or cheap i have a feeling that book outlet will have some or all of these books. The first one I think is most likely to be on here is I Believe in a Thing Called Love because I have picked up a Maureen Goo from Book Outlet before. I can't spell today. Yes! Four dollars and that's Canadian. American that's probably like a two three dollar book. Amazing. If you don't know, I'm a book outlet vlogger friend. Please click the link in my description so they know that you came from me if you are going to check out Book Outlet. And on that page will be all the books listed that I've ever bought from there so you can buy them too. This is how it always is since I've never heard of it. I don't know. Oh, is that? That's the same book. That's a different cover. I recognize this cover. I don't have it on my TBR or anything. Oh my god, there's only two left. I actually love that cover. I probably would have picked that up on my own. Next, we'll do Geekerella. I don't know. No. So that's a no. And lastly, oh my god. Warcross. Stop. Ten bucks amazing i can't believe that was on there uh, and then i need to check the library for geekerella all right this finally came geekerella from the library and the reason i didn't look on book outlet for the devouring gray or um the libraries because i just i knew it was too new so i went ahead and ordered it i'm very excited to read it with that we have all 10 books it's now june the month in which i'm going to read all of these titles and in my June TBR, I spoiled the fact that I'm going to be reading these two, but I didn't tell you why. I would have to kind of put my Instagram on hold if I couldn't show you anything that I was reading. So I at least gave you two of the books. So I figured these are the two I'll read first. Let's put this stack in order of most excited to read to least initially excited. No Exit and The Weight of Feathers. And I'm actually really interested in The Devouring Grey. And then I'd say Tin Man, and then the last time we say goodbye, the female of the species, this is how it always is, I believe in a thing called love, Warcross and Geekerella. That is my stack. Top three, can't wait to read. Bottom three, not really interested. Middle ones, mm, sure. But I know that if I read this stack in this order, it'll be 
way easier for me to DNF books. Like if I wait until the last couple of days of the month to read the three that I'm least interested in, I'll just be like, oh, there's only a couple days left. I got a rough shoe and I'm just gonna DNF them, whatever. So this can't be the order that I read them in. I know that much. I'm gonna prioritize no exit because I do want to make a three thriller this month and this will be the third thriller that I read for that video so as soon as I'm done this I can film and post that. Okay so I actually started this last night. I don't know why I was pretending that I haven't already dove in, in. dove in? Dived in. And I think I read about 50 pages before going to bed and it like genuinely freaked me out. <laughs> I think part of this video is interesting to see like just if I like books that are like other books but part of it is also interesting to see how the book is like another book. So the thing about The Cabin at the End of the World is that it's not solely realistic fiction and I wonder if this also will be that or if it's just that it involves a child because in this book as I've discovered which I think I read the synopsis at one point but definitely forgot these people get snowed in and one of them finds um, like a caged child in one of the other people who stranded vehicles this book is just really smart so far the way that it's written and i posted last night that i was reading it and gabby <laughs> responded and was like oh i love that book or something and like little do you know that it was your video that made me read it so i haven't actually thought about my final rating for no exit before i clicked record i think it would be a four star so the cabinet at the end of the world was initially a four and a half or five star. I don't totally remember. And that one was definitively better than this. I 100% understand the comparison though. The vibe was similar. The dynamics were similar. The fact that there's like a group of people doing something bad for a reason nobody totally understands. The fact that it's like isolated cabin at the end of the world takes place in a cabin this takes place at a truck rest stop because i liked cabin at the end of the world did i also like no exit yes the first recommendation was an official success now we know we can trust booktubers you know what would be fun if i actually did the next book as another one of gabby's picks so i can decide if we trust gabby <laughs> gabby i'm so sorry Okay, her other one was This Is How It Always Is, which would be a good choice to read next, actually, because I'm not super excited about it, but it's also because I don't really know that much about it anyway. This is Claude. He's five years old, the youngest of five brothers, and loves peanut butter sandwiches. He also loves wearing a dress and dreams of being a princess. When he grows up, Claude says he wants to be a girl. Rosie and Penn want Claude to be whoever Claude wants to be. They're just not sure they're ready to share that with the world. I'm not totally sure how this one was related to, um, what's it called? Little Fires Everywhere? Um, I guess the fact that it revolves around family? So, initial thoughts, 10 pages in. I don't like how it's written. Um, uh, it's very, I don't know, choppy, but... What I do appreciate is that it's not written, like, from the child's perspective. The right choices were made in writing this. The author is a cisgender woman who has a trans child, and she's writing about cisgender adults and a trans child. I think too many times authors try to write from the perspective of their children, whether it be their trans child or they have experience with an autistic child or they have a child in a wheelchair. It especially bothers me if they call it own voices, which happens more frequently than you would hope or think. I just found the audiobook on Scribd, so I'm gonna listen to it because I've read a lot already today and I'm just gonna listen and see if I enjoy it because it's I'm having a hard time reading it right now. My audiobook says that I'm at chapter 11, but in here the chapters aren't numbered. So I think 
I'm about a third of the way through, but I don't know for sure. I really think I could have DNF'd it if I had continued reading it with my eyes instead of my ears because it is just a little like dry but I do appreciate the tone of it. Uh, these parents who are trying to support their kid as best they can and think they're doing everything that they should be doing but their child is clearly in distress. So I just finished This Is How It Always Is. My rating I think would be like a 3.75. So did I enjoy this? Yes. Do I see why it was chosen as a recommendation? Yes. I struggle a little bit with if I would recommend it. I don't know that I would recommend it to my trans friends. None of them have reviewed this on Goodreads, but that's not surprising to me because I think um, queer reviewers, we tend to look for own voices first. This was really hard to read at certain points and I think it could be kind of harmful. And so far we have two books down, both three and four stars, so I'm still looking for like a new absolute favorite. I think I'm gonna pick up the Anna Marie McLemore. So The Weight of Feathers is her first book and if we're going in order of publication, even though like yes I gave these all five stars, I did enjoy each one more than the last, like if we're going publication order. So this I'm assuming will be five stars just because it's Anna Marie McLemore, but also I don't have super high expectations because it's her first novel, so who the heck knows. I also don't really know what this is about. For 20 years, the Palomas and the Carbos have been rivals and enemies locked in an escalating feud for over a generation. Both families make their living as traveling performers in competing shows. The Palomas swimming in mermaid exhibitions, the Carbos former tightrope walkers performing in the tallest trees they can find. Our main character's name is Lace. And there is a boy from another family who saves Lace's life. And I guess they're gonna fall in love and it's magical realism. I honestly just can't believe I didn't know this was about like circus families. I thought she was gonna recommend Caraval or there's three other circus books that popped into my head. The fact that this is in my five star predictions list and I didn't even know the plot is a little shocking. I just assume that I'm gonna love every Anna Marie McLemore. I'm about 60 pages in and in an impossible turn of events, the book that I was most excited to read, I'm not liking. The story is okay so far. I didn't realize it was about mermaids but they're not actually mermaids it's about a family who like dresses up as mermaids and puts on shows and then there's a family who puts on fake wings and puts on shows but i think people are supposed to believe like i can't really tell if the ongoers are i think they're supposed to believe that the people in trees really have wings and the people in the water really have tales compared to other Anna Marie McLemore which I've always rated five stars I don't think the scenes are being set up very well and I don't really understand like who's present in every scene like I'm just getting confused by who we're talking about what perspective we're in I think someone will talk and I'm like oh that person's there where are they basically I think both families think the other family is doing black magic so they are pretending to be these things but they also do actually have magical abilities. It is exactly 12 hours later and I have officially DNF'd this, I guess. Not wanting to read it and forcing myself to read it and not enjoying it is stunting my ability to like pick up something else. This is such a weird turn of events. So I'm gonna put it down and pick up something new and maybe I'll return to it when I'm more in the mood. 
I didn't think I wasn't in the mood. I'm just gonna go ahead and read the shortest book on my TBR because my readathon starts in two days and I need to get something completed. So let's just do this and see where we're at. It's Tin Man. This is recommended because of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I don't even know the plot of this. I had no idea it could even be similar to that book. I think I had like three people recommend this to me personally and so I just bought it. This is almost a love story but it's not as simple as that. Alice and Michael are 12 year old boys when they first become friends and for a long time it's just the two of them cycling the streets of Oxford Right, the first Tin Man cover I ever saw, I think has a bike on it. Teaching themselves how to swim, discovering poetry, and dodging the fists of overbearing fathers. And then one day, this closest friendship grows into something more. Many years later, Alice is married to Annie, and Michael is nowhere in sight. Which leads to the question, what happened in the years in between? And that's it. Short synopsis, short book, 200 pages. <sighs> Tin Man. It was... It was fine. I think I'm giving it three stars. Um, there were some like moving moments, some sad moments, some beautiful moments. But overall, like this just isn't memorable for me. It just occurred to me to think about like why people recommend what they recommend. And I think for me, I'm more likely to recommend something based on tone. It could be a totally different genre even. It could be um, different character traits. Things can be so different, but if they have a similar tone, I'm gonna recommend something. This, to me, um, is kind of a recommendation more just based on the character's sexualities. And that's probably why it got recommended um, because of Aristotle and Dante. I didn't watch everybody's full video. I think, I don't know if I made that clear, if it looked like I was just cutting the video. I didn't watch anybody's explanation for why they recommended what they recommended. So I think I'm gonna go back and watch everyone's stuff and see what they had to say about it. But for me, like themes were similar, but the tone is super different. I'm starting my next book. I've chosen The Female of the Species because I'm just so interested to see which side I fall on. This book seems to be really polarizing. People love it or hate it. Mindy McGinnis is kind of a mixed bag for me if I love or hate her stuff. So I do like a revenge plot and I do like a girl gang and that's kind of all I know going into it. So The Female of the Species. I gave this four stars. This is such a weird book or like my feelings on it are so weird. I kind of want to reread it. I definitely understand why it was recommended based on Sadie and I understand why people love it. This follows three different perspectives. The main one is a girl named Alex whose sister was raped and murdered and she has enacted revenge. It's definitely different than Sadie because we know from the get-go that she has killed somebody and now it's the aftermath of that but also like her maybe wanting to kill more people and also there's two other perspectives. People who live in this small town with Alex who have been impacted by this death or are just like they have storylines with Alex. I loved all the conversation in here. It said great things. It definitely talked about rape culture and slut shaming. And it was interesting because it gave these characters such cliche parts in the narrative and somewhat challenged those cliches, but at the same time like totally didn't and just let the characters be what they were. And I think we were supposed to come to our own conclusions about certain stuff. Really enjoyed it. Four stars. Again, get why everyone loves it. Get the recommendation. This was a spot on one. So I just took a week off from this challenge to participate 
and host a readathon. Something weird that happened during this week off though is that I got recommended Geekerella like three times. Got it in my Instagram comments and I got it on my Instagram live which was weird. And I had to try so hard not to give away that I was actually like getting ready to read it. I don't know anything about this. I'm assuming it's a love triangle. There's this girl, and there's a guy, and there's another guy. Um, the reason I say like it's not my kind of book is because this to me just looks like light, fluffy, white, contemporary. Also, I gather that it's about a celebrity, and as we've recently discussed, I don't really like books about famous people, whether they're the main character, side character, love interest. So I think like this girl is probably like obsessed with this show and maybe she gets an opportunity to date this guy or be on the show or it was recommended because of Lies on Her Monsters, so I'm guessing she's a fan. When geek girl Elle Whitmer sees a cosplay contest sponsored by the producers of Starfield, she has to enter. First prize is an invitation to a cosplay ball with a meet and greet with the actor slated to play Prince Carminder. Teen actor Darian Freeman is less than thrilled. Okay, so we've got the Cinderella-ness with the stepsisters and the stepmother, and then she falls in love with a celebrity. 30 pages in. These are two of the most cliche YA characters I've ever read. We've got a nerdy girl who's not like other girls. Everyone else is a mean cheerleader who cares about makeup, how dare they. And Darian is a famous teen actor who girls throw their underwear at on stage, but don't worry, he's totally humble. Okay, it's almost 12 hours later. It's the weekend, so I have had all day to try and get through this, you guys. I promise I didn't go into this planning to DNF it. But the fact is I've picked this up and put it down at least eight different times today. And I made it, I made it relatively far. I'm on page 113, so that's a third of the way. So it's not like I'm DNFing it after five pages, and I know that I'm definitely disappointing some of you. You're gonna tell me that it gets better, the sequel is better, or that the things that I currently don't like, like they change. But the fact is, I am not having a good time. I don't think this is for me. But the thing is, the books that I've liked with the fangirl, fanboy, fan person element, I didn't like because of that element. I liked them in spite of that element. Fan fiction and celebrity and conventions aren't something that I seek out in my literature. They just happen to be part of like the intense contemporary that I've picked up in the past. To the person who recommended it, appreciate the recommendation. I'm sure it's good for so many people, just not me. Okay, while reading Geekerella, I'm also reading Warcross. I am going to listen to this, I think, because I found it on Scribd, and I've really enjoyed listening to audiobooks as I work out, as opposed to music lately. I read the first chapter, I think I read the first chapter, and it seemed so much like Legend, but I read Legend like five years ago, so I'm probably just not remembering correctly, but Ready Player One, I liked so many aspects of that that I was just like fine. I felt okay about the video game stuff, but I didn't love it because of the video game element, if that makes any sense. But I'm definitely down to try something new. This isn't, you know, the craziest thing I could have picked up. I've read Marie Lu before, I've read virtual reality stuff before. Plot twist, I'm loving this book. I'm just over halfway through and um, 
it's great <laughs> the comparison between this and ready player one it's such an easy recommendation but it's definitely a valid one especially if you wanted more real world which is what i want so basically in books like this there's real life and then there's within virtual reality. I'm probably forgetting totally, but I'm pretty sure Ready Player One was like 80% in game. In War Cross, I feel like it's almost 70-80% real life and not that much actually in game playing as an avatar. She's a really good hacker and she's hacked into this game because she's so good. Um, the creator of this game invites her to Tokyo to play the game like professionally but also work with her as like a spy and i'm just liking everything about it i feel like there are some things that are gonna try to be plot twists that are really obvious but that's kind of just ya i am all done with war cross this is my favorite book so far that i've read for this experiment and one of the ones i would be least likely to pick up on my own so that is teaching me things about myself. This is why I do challenges like this, to be challenged with my reading preferences. That said, it's not a five star. I would give it a four. Don't know that a book like this or like Ready Player One would ever get a five from me anyway, regardless of how good they were, because my reading experience is never going to be like, I'm having the best time ever because I'm not like the most interested in the actual subject. I know there's a sequel called Wild Card and because of the way that this ended, which was exactly as I had predicted it halfway through, thank you very much, it does make me want to pick up the sequel. Next on the docket is going to be the last time we say goodbye. I would like to go back and forth between genres and vibes throughout this. This, I think, is more intense YA contemporary. I've read Cynthia Hand before. I loved The Afterlife of Holly Chase so much. And then since filming this intro, I've actually gotten an arc of her upcoming book, The How and the Why, which I'm really interested in reading. It comes out in like November. So I am excited to get into it now, but I don't totally know what it's about. The blurb on the back is very short and vague, but we're following Lex and her brother has died. And I don't know what else. She's grieving. It's about like the ghost of her brother. I don't think it's paranormal. I think it's like the metaphorical way of saying like the ghost of someone, or maybe it's an actual ghost. What do I know? Okay, so I didn't even have time to film a clip telling you what I was thinking while reading. I'm already done. I read this in 24 hours. It was incredible. It's five stars. And it's so funny because, a little insight into this video, I filmed the clips finding out the books I was gonna read two months ago. And so for some of these books, I've completely forgotten what book had inspired this recommendation. And while I was reading, I was like, this reminds me so much of this book. What is this book that I keep thinking of that it reminds me so much of? And yeah, um, it was the astonishing color of after. I just went back through the videos to see where this even came from, and it was this. This has such similar themes. Haley, this was such a good recommendation. <laughs> when originally watching the videos, I didn't watch the explanations, but I just rewatched her video and she was talking about how these have such similar themes. They're both about suicide and grief, but the astonishing color of after is better. And I had the exact same feeling. The Astonishing Color of After is definitely better because it includes a lot of things I love. There was obviously a lot of culture in this. Um, there's magic. But for those of you who didn't like the magical elements of this, and I know a lot of you feel like this book was too long, oh my gosh, you're gonna love this. It's hard-hitting YA contemporary. It follows a girl whose brother has taken his own life and she feels a lot of grief, obviously, but also guilt. She feels a certain amount of responsibility for what happened. And it was really hard to read. I cried. It was beautiful and it's my favorite book that I've read for this challenge. 
It may be a mistake to leave my most anticipated until the end, but that's just what we're doing. Since that one was a really hard read, this looks like a light YA contemporary, am I right? It's called I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. I, since picking this, have read another Maureen Gu. Okay, Desi Lee believes anything is possible if you have a plan. That's how she became student body president, varsity soccer star, and it's how she'll get into Stanford. But she's never had a boyfriend, okay. Now I see the relation to To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. She finds guidance in the Korean dramas her father has been obsessively watching for years. Desi goes after the moody, elusive artist Luca Dracos, and boat rescues, love triangles, and stage car crashes ensue. Okay, a love triangle, another link. So I'm almost 150 pages into, I believe, in a thing called love. And to be frank, I'm not really feeling it. At this point, I usually tell you more about what the book's about than just learned in the synopsis, but the synopsis pretty much lays it out perfectly. She is creating a relationship with a boy based on kind of false pretenses. I just want to note that I just realized that I gave to all the boys I loved before three stars when I originally read it. Then I read the sequel and gave it four stars. And then I think I reread the first book and gave it four stars. Or maybe I didn't and I just watched the movie and I have such fond feelings about that that I thought I loved the book. It's very light and fun and silly, which maybe just is not what I need at this moment. And I finished it. My rating! This was kind of hard because it was cute and sweet, but it was also like that girl did some uh wrong stuff to get the guy, which is like the point of the book. I think you can just tell that like the book's intent is to be like a girl who tries to get the guy based on all of these like tricks and schemes and then she learns her lesson and realizes what true love is. So there was definitely nothing unexpected in here, but it was quite ridiculous at times, uh, intentionally. I guess I'd have to give it a three. If you're looking for light contemporary romance, I don't see why you wouldn't like this. So we're on to the very last book, which is The Devouring Grey. Now, I've either made a huge mistake or done something great, leaving my most anticipated book until the end of the video. Now, I don't go out of my way to look for books that say they are like The Raven Cycle. The thing I love about The Raven Cycle isn't the magic and the like other world that they're in. My main thing that I love about The Raven Cycle is the friendship dynamic and the character driven nature of it and the third person omniscient perspective. So I've actually avoided a lot of books because they're pitched as like The Raven Cycle meets this other thing and I know they're just gonna be so fantasy based. So this one was on my radar for sure. I have it on my TBR shelf on Goodreads, but I just had no real motivation to pick it up because I'm I'm scared. I really don't know a lot about this. I'm pretty sure I've heard there's a monster involved. So I'm currently about a hundred pages into The Devouring Grey. To be perfectly honest, nothing has quite captivated my attention yet. I'm just reading to read. I definitely understand the Raven Boy's influence. There are characters who have some magical situations. There is clairvoyancy discussed, tarot card reading. Overall though, I would say it's reminding me more of Sawkill Girls. We've got like three different perspectives and they all seem to have a different kind of relationship with this devouring gray 
monster that I still don't totally get. One of the characters, like Sako Girls, is new to town and is just figuring out the situation with the monster. They all have different intentions and roles, but there's I think three or four different families who are all in charge of protecting this small town from the devouring gray. Oh boy, I'm not excited to have to talk to you about the devouring gray because I have to talk about how I didn't like it and then I have to explain so it doesn't get misconstrued that I went into it with like too high of expectations. I just didn't feel connected at any point to any character, to any plot. I didn't love the writing. I just, it's not for me maybe 2.75 do i understand the recommendation i definitely get it like i want to recommend this even more than the raven cycle because there's better representation there's like bisexual main character who's like on page so if you're looking for some good rep i would check it out there are definitely relationships in the devouring gray that reminded me of relationships in the raven cycle but i just never like felt connected to them myself. There's four characters and so it'd be like this person's over here, this person's over here, this person's doing this, this person's doing this. And it was just regularly like throwing information at you rather than letting the scenes and the dialogue take over and letting it be character driven. This is one of those books that I would still recommend. I really think people are going to enjoy this. It's the start of a series. I just know that it's gonna be one of those books that I think back on a couple months from now, I'm not gonna remember a single character's name, any of the plot, any of the twists. Like I'm already blanking on what I liked and didn't like about it. I just, it's super forgettable to me. Oh, I feel so bad. I think I would check out more from this author. I wanted to like it. I wanna like, her book. I also just noticed she follows me on Instagram so I feel extra bad. I hope she never sees this. And now I'm just kind of bummed that I ended this whole video on a sour note. Like this was technically the lowest rating I gave a book. I'll come at you tomorrow with some like final thoughts. Let's go ahead and wrap up this experience. As always, with videos where I have a secret TBR and I challenge myself to read a certain set of things that I might not normally, I always intend to have a big conversation at the end, like what I've learned, what this has shown me. And then I'm so exhausted from filming it and editing it and wanting to get it up that I like can't even think straight anymore. I don't know what I've learned. Like this was just fun. Obviously it was just a joke to begin with. If we can really trust booktubers, I just wanted some clickbait. I hope nobody clicked on it expecting shade. What we've learned is just that everybody experiences different books differently. Some books can be really easily recommended just based on similar plot points and if you're are likely to enjoy this aspect of a book if this book has the same plot or genre, subgenre, whatever they have that's similar, you're probably gonna like both because you like that genre or plot point. I do think recommendation videos like these are probably the best type of recommendation videos because there's a specific example you know, it's not just somebody saying, oh, here's 10 YA contemporary romances that I loved and like, you'll love them too. And I think it also forces people to be really creative and thoughtful with their recommendations. If I were to do this type of video, I would definitely be more focused. Like some of these people are more focused on vibes as opposed to like just plot and themes, which is the type of recommendation I more appreciate because I'm probably the unpopular opinion here, but like just because I liked a book about, you know, magic in a castle, I'm not gonna pick up 50 other like royalty 
magic books. Or just because I liked a book with a bisexual main character it doesn't mean I just want to pick up 50 other books just because they had a bisexual main character without actually like being interested in the synopsis. You know what I'm saying? So all together in this video I had 10 books that I was to give a try. I DNF'd two. This one is still the most shocking thing that has happened in this video. I have in the past three weeks tried picking this up like two I think two more times still couldn't get into it I don't like the writing and I'm very confused by my feelings about this and then Geekerella which wasn't a surprise but I did give it full effort so all together I completed eight books we had some 2.75s we had a couple three stars and then four stars which is exciting even though there was only one five star out of this entire experience like I'm glad I didn't dislike or feel meh about everything that I read. Obviously this would have been a totally different experience had the majority of these books not already been on my TBR. Out of the 10 books, five of them I already owned and was already interested in reading. One of them was on my TBR, I just didn't have yet. Three of them were my favorites. So that kind of just tells me that I know my reading taste really well. There was three that I probably wouldn't have picked up if not in this experiment and one book that I had never heard of. If they were all books that I had never heard of, this would have been probably totally different. The one good surprise from this was definitely Warcross. Appreciate this recommendation the most because I don't know that I would have ever read this. So thank you. Jess. She actually tweeted something really nice about me the other day and I felt really guilty about in the recommendation section like maybe I was being a little too sarcastic. To everyone whose video I watched, thank you so much for your recommendations. I actually, I don't know if you can tell but like I was losing a little momentum at the beginning. There was five videos that I watched and didn't end up showing you that I was watching because I watched like a full hour and a half of content and didn't end up with a single recommendation from any of those videos. And then throwing them into the video would have just dragged it out for you. So I watched a lot more content than you even know. And I appreciate everybody's recommendations and opinions. And sometimes I come off a little bratty. So I'm sorry if that happened. But if you guys stuck around to the very end, which I doubt many of you are here, so the select friends that are here, thank you for being a part of my life. I don't know what I'm saying. I love you a lot and uh, as a friend. And I'll see you later, bye. <laughs>